Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Since... <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. I am announcing the winner to my last video's giveaway. If you are not familiar with my videos, I do insert random questions into my videos. And if you answer that question in the comment section, you will automatically be entered into the giveaway. Last video actually did it a little bit different and I prompted you guys to comment down below your guys' Instagram handle. Based off of that, I just picked a winner. So our winner is... Congratulations, go ahead and message me on Instagram and I will get that sent out right to you. You will be receiving the Profiles Backstage swag bag as mentioned in the last video. I hope you enjoy it and like it as much as I did. For today's video, I am doing the Nightmare Before Christmas set. I asked you guys what you guys wanted to see for Halloween and that was literally the number one requested video. So I am so excited to be drawing this out for you guys. For those of you that are not good at nail art or are a beginner nail tech, I will recommend there are tons of different alternatives to create this look. For example, for this set, I actually used an image that was printed on some nail decals that I received a while back and I'll enter a picture here. But that is an easy, easy alternative to be able to apply that onto the nail and carry on and you will still have some bomb nails. However, I haven't done hand painted nail art in so long, so I was so excited to create this for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now, let's get right into it. right into today's video i am starting off with a pre-prepped practice hand i did apply the mccart tips which you can find in my amazon storefront they are straight tips and they are pre-shaped squared which i really really love especially for nail art so i'm just going ahead and taking my tammy taylor peel and stick file and just filing the sides making sure that the sides are nice and flush to the natural nail and then I'm just squaring off that tip just to make sure that the shape is on point since the beginning. Now I'm taking my black acrylic powder and I'm going to be applying that on the pinky. I'm just taking a medium sized bead of acrylic, applying that in the middle section and then lightly dragging it down. I believe I've talked about this color before. It is extremely easy to work with as all the other not polished acrylics. They are very blendable, which I absolutely love, especially being so pigmented as black is. I definitely recommend it if you guys have trouble working with black. So then I'm just going ahead and applying another bead near the cuticle area, but not quite all the way up, and then blending it down to the existing acrylic. And then I'm going to be doing a last bead in the cuticle area gently pushing it up into the cuticle making sure that i'm holding the finger in a downward position so that the product does not run into that cuticle i am using my not polished brush and this is a size 12 i absolutely love it along with my profiles backstage acrylic monomer everything will be linked in the description box so make sure you guys check that out for products and discount codes I'm going ahead and applying Milky White from Not Polish onto my ring finger. This is the only one that I'm going to be using a lighter color on because I am going to be doing lighter color nail art. So I'm just using this as base, again doing my acrylic application as I normally do. Always remember to make sure you clean the sides. This will help get a better shape and less filing at the end. So I'm just cutting off any excess acrylic that I might have. 
I always use very thin layers of colored acrylic and then I encapsulate the reason why they are very flat at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply black acrylic onto my middle finger and my index finger as well. Now I am going to be encapsulating these nails using the not polished clear acrylic. I'm just applying as much thickness as I want to the nails. This always depends on your client's likes and always make sure you keep that in mind. You definitely want the acrylic to be thick enough so that they don't break easily but also be aware of what your client wants. I am going ahead and filing once everything is nice and dry for this step. I am using my Kiara Sky e-file. I have her at about 8,000 RPMs. That's what my comfort zone is when I'm finished filing. And I am using my 5-in-1 bit. I believe it is a medium grit for this step. I lightly go around the cuticle area and then I go vertically up and down the entire surface of the nail. The transition from the cuticle area down to the tip is a lot smoother if I do it vertically up and down. And then I feel like I also cover more surface than if I were to do it horizontally. Thank you. 
Once I'm done using my e-file, I'm taking my hand file once again and filing the sides, making sure that the shape is nice and straight. I try to keep it as perfect as possible throughout my whole application process. However, you still want to make sure you file those sides because no matter how perfect you apply it, you can still make it look a lot better when you use your file. So always keep that in mind and always, always, always finish file no matter how smooth your application process is. Now I am flipping the hand over to make sure that I get the shape nice and perfect. This will allow you to see the nails from a different perspective, which will help tremendously because sometimes you will miss certain little defects from your view. Now I'm taking my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and smoothing the surface into smooth perfection. I want it to be as smooth as possible for my nail art application, especially because I'm going to be doing a really intricate nail art. I want everything to be super, super smooth so that I don't have any ridges that can potentially mess up my nail art. So make sure you guys do this step. Now I'm just taking my lint-free wipe and some swipe, making sure that I'm cleaning the surface of the nail. You can also wash the hands, but I prefer this step just because it's quicker in my opinion. Now getting into the fun nail art. I was so excited to create these nails. So I am using my detail brush from Profiles Backstage. It is the pink sparkly one that I've used in my other videos. And I am just going in and drawing lines vertically down the pinky nail. I am using my Young Nails Mission Control gel paint for this entire set. You can find that in my Amazon storefront. Highly recommend them. They are so easy to work with and I absolutely love gel paint. Again, make sure you check out the description box for any of the products and discount codes. You want to make sure you cure this in the light. I did cure it for at least 30 seconds. And then I'm going over top once more with that white just because I felt like it was kind of patchy. I didn't do a really good job. So I wanted to make sure that I was making it as perfect as possible, at least as opaque as possible. And then again, I'm curing it in the light for another 30 seconds. You can always do like 10 to 15 seconds. I just like to make sure that everything is nice and cured. Now getting into our little characters, I am terrible at eyeballing the position of heads for whatever reason. So I always start with a different area of the nail art. For example, on this one, I wanted to make sure that everything was nice and centered. So I am starting off with the neck and then kind of the like collar area. And he is white, so I'm just going in with my white gel paint, the same one that I was using for the pinky and outlining that. I am using an image that I have right next to my hand. So I'm looking at that and then drawing it as I'm going and I'm just filling in that collar area. Again, always cure it in the light whenever you feel like it's needed, especially if you're going to be using two different colors in one area, you want to make sure you cure so that they don't bleed unless that's the effect you're looking for. 
So once I'm done with the neck and the collar area, I'm going in and doing the head. In the image that I have, he is kind of slanted to the left a little bit. So I'm just making sure that I'm mimicking that as best as possible. I'm really not trying to like do it super perfect at this point. I just want a rough outline of it and you can always fix it, especially with characters like this. There's always kind of a gray area where you can mess up and then fix it later. If you are a beginner, definitely 100%, you can go in and just fill in the whole head and then later go in with the black gel paint and do the eyes on top of the white. I don't like layering them too much, so I just went ahead and left a little bit of that area with the black and then I'm gonna go ahead afterwards and fill that in. So now at this point, I am trying to perfect that shape as best as possible, making sure that I'm rounding everything off perfectly. And then I placed it in the light for again 30 seconds and now I'm going in with my black gel paint and really outlining those eyes and making sure that they are how I want them to look. Now I did get a little bit of white and just put it over top of that black on my nail and then mixed it together to make a gray color. And I'm just using that to kind of outline where the mouth is going to be. I want a lighter shade just so it doesn't overpower the actual mouth design, just in case I need anything to be fixed. So once I'm content with that, I went ahead and cured it in the light and I'm going with the actual shape of the mouth. I'm kind of eyeballing it because it's such a thin line. It was so hard to get it nice and perfect, but I do think it still looked fine. And I just went in with the black at this point and I'm kind of giving it its shape. And then I'm going to be doing the stitched effect on the mouth area as well by just doing little vertical lines across the mouth. Now I will say at this point was when I switched over to my other nail art brush and this one is from Amazon. It's my go-to and I've had it for like four years and it's still going strong. I ended up switching because the other brush had a little bit of the bristles kind of frayed and it was not allowing me to get those super tiny details, especially in this part. So I went ahead and switched. And then I'm just going ahead and finishing the nostrils and I'm adding the tiny little bow tie bat and I'm trying to do this as best as possible. It was so tiny, so it was so hard to get everything super crisp, especially like the hard edges. So bear with me, I tried my best. I'm just doing the little head part here. And then I'm going to be adding the eyes with white. And I'm going to be doing the other details in a later part of the video. So this next part is definitely really hard to see on camera, at least from me editing. I can't really see it, but you can kind of get the gist of exactly how I'm drawing the lines from the movement of my brush. All I'm doing is taking a black gel paint and 
doing the outline where I want the suit to start and end as a guide for where I'm going to be doing the stripes. So I didn't necessarily need it to show. I just wanted to have a base design so I know where to place everything. So now I'm taking my white gel paint and doing tiny little horizontal lines along that collarbone. And I am making sure that they are horizontal so you can see the difference in the design. And then for the rest of the suit, I'm going to be doing the design or the lines vertically. And then that really helps differentiate what part of the suit it is. Now I will say the horizontal lines were extremely hard for me to do for whatever reason. I did want them extremely thin so I think that's what it was. I had a hard time doing them perfect so I just took my 3D nail art brush and cleaned up any excess paint that I didn't want. And then I just went ahead and created more lines. I didn't really care if they were perfect to be honest because the details are so tiny. And I felt like once I top coated them, they were going to be fine and it was going to all blend together and you were still going to be able to see the design in a whole. Now I did wait till this part to add the wings of the bat just because I wanted it to obviously be on top of the stripes and not below it. So now I'm just going in with my black gel paint. I'm honestly just doing branch like little lines. I felt like that's kind of what I gathered from the images that I found. And then I'm going in and kind of bringing out the design with white lines like I said, from the images that I gathered. I went ahead and cured it, and then now I'm going in with my white gel paint, just randomly drawing lines on top of the black ones. Now uh, moving on to Sally and I pre-mixed this blue. I did mix white gel paint with the blue gel paint and then I added a little bit of their teal gel paint just to give it a little bit more of a green effect because it was a little bit too purple for my liking. So I am grabbing that gel paint and starting off again with the neck and the collar area. I'm trying to do it as best as possible. This is so hard sometimes for me to do without getting all the way in front of the view where I'm recording so bear with me I think I did pretty good on staying out of it but this does mean that it takes me a little bit longer to do it just because I'm constantly looking at my camera to make sure that I'm not out of focus and my freaking hand is not in the way so I'm just going ahead and making sure that I'm filling that in I am using very very thin layers of this paint just because I know for a fact I'm going to be layering a ton of colors on this specific nail, so I don't really necessarily care if it's a little bit sheer.
Now I'm just cleaning up that shape because I kind of messed it up. And now I'm going in with the face. I'm just, again, going based off of an image and trying as best as I can to make it as even as possible. And then I realized this was taking too long, so I switched over again to my 3D nail art brush and used that to fill in the rest of the face. Now we're moving on to the eyes and I'm taking white gel paint and outlining them first. She has like these really huge googly eyes. So I'm just trying my best to mimic that. And then I'm going to be infilling that eye area. And I'm going ahead and repeating that on the opposite side. I had a little bit of a hard time doing this one even just because again my hand gets really in the way and I didn't want to ruin the recording so she does come out looking a little bit crazy for just a second and then once I back out of doing the actual nail art I realized that it was way off so I went ahead and cleaned off some of the excess color and then I finally was able to fix it. Now we're just outlining those eyes and I feel like this is my favorite part because it starts bringing the look together. At first you're kind of like, what is that? And so I added in the little details. I kind of flicked up another little black line and then I did the exact same thing on the other side and then I added the eyelashes. So I normally like to freehand little circles, however, because they were eyes and I really didn't want to mess them up, I went ahead and took a dotting tool and did the little pupils, try to make them as centered as possible. And now I'm going in with a darker blue. So I still have that blue gel paint that I used on her face and I just added some of the darker blue into it to make it darker. And this is what I'm going to be using for some depth in her face i feel like this is kind of important especially on her because you have all of the contouring and stuff i went ahead and added some along where the hairline is going to be a little bit under the eyes and then you'll kind of see me adding details here and there using that same color this is exactly what i'm going to be using as well for the nose I was so terrified that her nose was gonna come out terrible because I've never really done like shading work. So I was really, really scared. And I just added the dark blue to one side of the nose. And then I'm going to be taking white as well to highlight any areas. And in the photo, this area on her forehead was kind of in the shape of a triangle and all of that was highlighted. So I went ahead and added white to that. And then I tried blending it out as much as possible without it being too harsh on that blue. Again, adding it on the opposite side of the nose, trying to kind of give it its shape with that paint. 
of course curing that in the light and then I'm gonna be going in with my black gel paint and adding some more details Now moving on to her chin area, I'm kind of roughly outlining it with that darker blue and then I'm adding some depth into her neck as well. And this kind of gives me an idea on where exactly I want to place her chin. And then I did take a little bit of that lighter blue and blended it into it because I didn't want it to be too harsh, especially in that area. And it really helped blend it out perfectly. So now I'm going in and shaping out her face using that dark blue. Again, it's gonna give it a little bit of depth. And then I'm going in and outlining it with the black. I'm going ahead and outlining the hairline and then I'm going to outline the neck and the chest area as well. Now I'm just adding some stitches along her neck and her chest area and then I'm going to be moving on to her hair. I like to kind of take it as I'm going. Sometimes I know certain things are going to be harder for me so I try to leave them till the end. And so while I'm doing the rest of the nail art, I kind of try to plan exactly how I'm going to go about it. So just to kind of give you guys an idea on how I decide exactly what I'm going to do next. I'm taking my red gel paint and adding the lips. For whatever reason, lips and mouths are always the hardest for me to do. I remember when I did my princess nail art. I was so stressed out over these freaking mouths so I was pretty excited that it took me one try to get her mouth. It wasn't as hard as I remember it being but it's also very different than the ones that I did as her lips are just super simple and tiny. So I went ahead and did that first and then I'm going in with my black gel paint outlining the lips and then I'm going to be adding the little stitches along the sides of her mouth as well and I'm connecting that line all the way down to the side of her cheek. Now for her lovely hair, it's like a reddish orangish brown color. So that's exactly what I mixed. I mixed red, orange, and brown to get that like really pretty red color. And then I'm just going to fill in all of the hair area which is right above her head and then right next to her neck.
Once I'm done filling in that area, I went ahead and cured it in the light. Make sure that it's nice and dry. Now I'm going in with just brown and kind of just drawing random lines on the hair as I want to give it a little bit of depth and a little bit of texture to the color. Now I'm going in and adding the rest of the details using my black gel paint with my same liner brush and just going right down the middle adding a little bit more where I want it to be a little bit darker and then I'm just dragging out lines from that center line. It kind of helps again give it more depth to that hair. Now for her dress, one side is darker and the other one is yellow. So I mixed orange and brown to get that burnt orange color and then just filled that in. I went ahead and cured that and then I went in on the other side with a mustard yellow. And all I did to get that color was mixed yellow and brown. And I did really like the turnout of the colors, very, very fall-like. And then I went ahead and cured that in the light. And now I'm going ahead and adding the detail to the right side of her dress as she does have like a swirled pattern. And I'm just going in with brown to bring that out just a little bit. And she is all finished. I decided to do a sugared effect onto the index finger by applying Gloss It From Not Polish. And while that top coat is still wet, I went ahead and poured raw glitter over top and then cured it in the light so for anyone interested on what i would suggest to do on the thumb and if i was specifically doing it just how i did these other four nails i would do more stripes you can absolutely do different designs as well but to keep it all cohesive i would definitely do more stripes now i'm just going in on the rest of the nails with matte it from not polish i am going to do matte nails for this as it really makes the nail art pop Definitely recommend it for intricate nail art like these. Make sure you cure it in the light. I am curing it in the light for two minutes just to make sure everything is nice and dry. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. I hope you guys loved it. Thank you guys so much and I will catch you guys next time.